Hey guys, this is episode three of the RMX 250 engine rebuild how-to and episode 10 of the RMX 250 build series that I'm doing. I finally got the cylinder back from the replaters. Let's get straight into it and finish this engine. First thing we're gonna do now that we've got the cylinder back in our possession is clean it really well. Uh, they recommend to clean it with soapy water and to get a microfiber cloth and wipe out the inside of the cylinder with some degreaser. You'd be surprised how dirty these things are even though they look really clean. And before we install the piston, we're gonna use it as a tool to check the ring end gap and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that now. To check the end gap on the rings, we're going to insert our first ring into the cylinder. And we're gonna use the piston to push the ring down square and push it down about 10 millimeters. So you can see we've got a gap here at the end of the rings and we need to make sure that's within spec. The spec for this particular engine, which is the 1999 RMX250S, is 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters. So I've got my set of feeler gauges here and I'm just gonna make sure that the end gap is within spec. We're starting to get a bit of drag on 0.33, so we know our piston ring end gap on this first ring is within spec. The process for the second ring is exactly the same. It's good to check them, but generally the rings come pre-gapped. I've rebuilt a few engines now, and I've not had to uh, change the gap on the, on the rings yet. So now that I've checked both rings, we can go back to the engine and install the piston. Actually, what I do like to do before I put the piston on the rod is install one of the circlips because it just halves the chances of dropping a circlip into the bottom end. So you can see I've scratched that coating the tiniest little bit. It's very thin and very easy to scratch. It's just a Teflon coating that wears away within the first few rides anyway. It just helps with the piston break in. To lower the chances of you dropping the second circlip into the engine, it's a good idea to just stuff a rag down here. So the piston is installed on the rod and the rings installed on the piston. Just make sure that the open end lines up with those pins that are located in a two-stroke piston. As you can see there, it stops the rings from spinning while the engine's in operation. Also, as the cylinder goes on, you need to make sure that these rings aren't getting caught on top of that pin. Both numbers facing up, good to go. When I took the cylinder to the replaters, I didn't remove the uh, head studs and I guess they needed them removed, so they did it, but they didn't put them back in. So I'm gonna show you how to put your head studs back in or replace them. The same way I put them in is gonna be the same way you can take them out. First, I'm gonna put anti-seize on all these studs and the side that goes into the cylinder is the side that has the flat top on it. The more rounded side faces up and that goes towards the cylinder head. So to tighten all these studs down, uh, use the two nut method, and that's basically two nuts uh, tightened back to back like this. Put your first nut on upside down, and the second nut on top of it, right side up. You tighten them against each other, and then you can use the top one to drive the stud into the cylinder. There's no torque spec for these studs that I could find in the manual, so just nice and firm should be fine. All the studs are installed on the cylinder, and you can see with uh, this uh, RMX cylinder head, that this stud isn't long enough, and that's because I'm using a different cylinder head. Just make sure if you are using your RMX uh, cylinder head that you put the longest stud in the correct spot. And now it's time to install the power valve. I'm just pre-lubricating the power valve with some two-stroke oil. Just make sure you're installing the centerpiece the correct way, because you can have it upside down. So the correct way would be the taper on the front of the valve matches the bigger piece. And then the top piece, two tabs on this three piece power valve go towards the top of the cylinder.
There's no torque spec for these three screws and there is also no Loctite spec for these. So just nice and firmly done up is probably fine. There's a small hole in the shaft you can see just there that needs to line up the back of this threaded hole here so that when this little grub screw goes into it, it holds the shaft in place. The torque spec for this little grub screw is 10 newton meters. Just get these two bolts uh, done up firmly, just enough so you can still turn this. And the stock spec for the power valve tensioner spring is half a turn. There's no torque spec for this bolt or these two bolts but about 10 to 12 newton meters should be fine and uh, no Loctite on those. I'm going to coat the inside of the cylinder and the piston with some two-stroke oil before I install the cylinder. Just before I put the cylinder on, I need to put the cylinder base gasket back on. And as all the other gaskets that I put on the engine, I'm gonna give it a light coating of grease. Do not forget to put the cylinder dowels. The cylinder is on, the power valve actuator rod is connected and the cylinder nuts are all torqued down to uh, 38 newton meters. When installing your head gasket, you need to make sure that the little notch on the head gasket is pointing towards the inlet side and that the smaller holes are closer to where the water inlet is. So for example, here's the RMX 250 cylinder head. The water inlet is over here, so the small holes need to be closest to that. I'm gonna be using a 97 RM250 cylinder head and the holes are closest to that as well, so it should work fine. I've checked to make sure that the coolant jacket holes uh, also line up with the head gasket and they do, so I don't have to change the orientation of this head gasket for this particular cylinder head. The torque of the cylinder head nuts is 28 newton meters, and with that, this engine is fully complete. Thanks to everybody who stuck around for this mini series, which is the engine rebuild within the big series, which is the whole bike rebuild. I would film myself putting the engine back into the bike, but you guys already saw that in an earlier episode, so I'm just not gonna waste anybody's time. In the next episode, I'm gonna do a full walk around of the finished build. The bike will be dyno tuned, it will be roadworthy, and I'll hopefully get some riding footage for you guys. If you enjoy my videos, do me a favor and subscribe and like the videos for me. Uh, it helps me get the videos out to new people, and I'll hopefully have the next video out for you very soon.